Thankfully so, a corrupt sheriff was arrested by city cops in Espanola. A typical attempt to detain a suspect takes an unexpected turn in New Mexico on the evening of March 22, 2022. Phil Chacon, that's who you have a warrant for? Right. Pull everybody out. Hey, I'll bring them in. I don't want to pull them out. Huh? I don't want to pull them back. Excuse me? I'm not asking. I'm telling you. I will bring him in. Okay? In this suspenseful story about power, privilege, and police behavior, this is a story of strange standoffs that reveals contradictions within the legal system, causing everyone to wonder about justice, ethics, and loyalty. So how was the corrupt sheriff arrested by the city cops? The scene is set for the intense confrontation that occurs on March 22, 2020, in Espanola, New Mexico. Hey, uh, the sheriff just pulled in, and he's, he's asking us to pull back, and he'll pull him in. But he's been drinking. I can smell it on him. We're going to need somebody. Huh? Yeah, and we need to pull somebody over here, somebody above me, because he's he's already pushing his weight around with me, so. Philip Chacon holed himself in his house after getting stabbed earlier in the day, and the police made an effort to talk to him. The Espanola Police Department surrounds the home and begs him to submit quietly, but the sudden appearance of Sheriff James Lujan raises questions. His efforts to persuade the officers that Chacon isn't inside, and his apparent intoxication create suspicions setting the stage for a tense exchange. Yeah, yes. Bring who in? Phil Chacon? That's who you have a warrant for? Right. Pull everybody out. I'll bring them in. I don't want to pull them out. Huh? I don't want to pull them back. Excuse me? I'm not asking. I'm telling you. I will bring him in. The Española PD surrounded the house and started issuing orders for Mr. Chacon to surrender peacefully on the evening of March 22, 2022, after the Espanola Police Department attempted to contact him. Shortly after the incident started, Rio Arriba Sheriff James Lujan arrived on the scene in plain clothes and broke down Mr. Chacon's barricade. After a brief confrontation, Mr. Chacon turned himself in to the authorities and was arrested. Sheriff Lujan disclosed to the Espanola police that he had been speaking with Mr. Chacon inside the residence. He also made a brief attempt to persuade the officers that Mr. Chacon was not actually there. The Espanola police department became suspicious of Sheriff Lujan after he made an unwelcome appearance, which led to the department filing an official complaint. We're not pulling back. Hi, I'm waiting for, I told Jeremy, Jeremy's calling command one now, uh, but do you smell it or am I the only one who smells yeah. it? Please do something about okay. it. Please. Right. Sheriff Lujan formally received the search warrants and must immediately comply with the judge's orders. The search warrant allows officers to search the sheriff for the phones, and since the phones are currently in the sheriff's pocket, he was served the warrant while in possession of them. Nevertheless, Sheriff Lujan tries to override the search warrant's authority by giving the phones to his deputy. Hold on to that. In the U.S., the Fifth and Fourteenth Amendments guarantee everyone the right to due process, but they do not include actions like challenging the legality of a search warrant as it is being executed. To contest the legality of a search warrant, a defendant must show up in court rather than on the street. The sheriff also informed the Espanola police that he would hold off on turning over the phones until he had spoken with his attorney. It is incredibly rare for officers to allow a suspect to comply with a warrant on their own terms in a nation where police departments are permitted to carry out no-knock raids in the name of justice when they discover millions of dollars worth of contraband and sensitive personal information. The Supreme Court declared in Coolidge v. Hampshire in 1971 that only a judge with objectivity who can determine whether there is probable cause can issue a warrant. In order to get a search warrant, law enforcement personnel must show that there is cause to believe that the search is valid, regardless of whether the warrant was issued by the circuit judge or a magistrate. The deputies on the scene were instructed by the Spanish officers that they must be able to see the phones in case the sheriff tries to delete anything. The sheriff and undersheriff eventually made their way back to the front of the office, but continued to wander aimlessly in and out of the officer's line of sight. Soon after, Roger Jimenez, 
the interim police chief for Española, shows in to speak with Sheriff Lujan. Following is some of the conversation that happened between them. Court ordered it. I understand that you guys are merely performing your duties, but I don't want you to be involved in this while we were in need of the phones. Now that you have your phone, can I please ask a man to extend you that kind of professional courtesy? Take it home, you guys. I didn't win the show, I simply sent these men in. I was just looking and we cleaned the phone, so it's all right. Ronnie's brother wants to get the phone, but, you know, under sheriff, it's not probable that there will be a court order. I really don't want to have to put anyone in that situation. I'll do as you ask, but I truly don't want to. I didn't go with them to search this person's home. I only gave them copies, not the phones. He already given me the phones, although you claim to have a search warrant to look through my personal phones. The warrant does not state that, am I correct? Do you want the sheriff's office to be locked down while you make a call? If I'm not being arrested, you won't stop me from leaving. This minor physical altercation shows that the deputies prioritize their loyalty to the sheriff over their sworn duty to uphold the law. The deputy's minor physical scuffle shows that they put the sheriff's favor ahead of their oath to enforce the law. You're not going to stop me from leaving if I want to leave. Am I under arrest? If we have to. Am I under arrest? Not, not, not Good. now. Get away from me. Not now. Go back inside. Hey, We're going to lock down the office. Hey, you walk back in. Please, go back in the office. <laughs> Seriously. Don't touch. Back up. Back you can up. go in the office, but... Back up. Don't touch. Don't reach. Back up. Go inside. You're not certified, so back up. The Rio Ariba deputies are required to take the same oath as every other member of law enforcement to uphold the law as it is defined by their local justice system. The search warrant was not upheld, which raises major questions about the department's competency and demonstrates a clear inconsistency between their capacity to carry out their obligations in line with the law and the legislation itself. The Espanola police officers followed the correct procedures and gave the sheriff a valid search warrant. After securing the phones, the Espanola police departed the area without further incident. A few days later, the police obtained a search warrant for the phone's contents and learned that Sheriff Lujan had not given them the right phone. The phone that the sheriff had used to contact Mr. Chacon was specified in the search warrant but neither of the phones that the sheriff gave the detectives was the one he had used on March 22nd. Sheriff Lujan in the Rio Ariba Sheriff's Office received a F for failing to comply with the language of the search warrants which escalated a law. An arrest warrant was issued after it was discovered that the sheriff had violated the terms of the search warrants, and on May 21st, the Espanola Police Department arrested Lujan at his office. The sheriff was able to add a resisting charge to the others he was already facing during the arrest. The blind loyalty of the deputies sheds light on the gang-like operations of some police departments across the country. Officers who act in the best interests of their department at the expense of properly enforcing the law are a danger to their co-workers. If the sheriff's actions are any indication of his guilt, then there is no doubt that he will be prosecuted for his crimes. However, it will be interesting to see what, if any, information is gathered from the cell phone. Throughout the chat, the sheriff insisted that the search warrants were acquired as retaliation for comments he had made about the interim police chief. However, I was unable to independently confirm these claims, and I was unable to get in touch with the sheriff's office for comment. The Espanola Police Department gets a C- for granting the sheriff privileges that they do not grant to common citizens by letting the sheriff and deputies wander aimlessly through the building while executing a search warrant and by failing to apprehend the sheriff after he made several attempts to defy the court order. The Espanola officers extended professional politeness to Sheriff Lujan by giving him enough time to trick them and try to circumvent the court order. This incident is very similar to the previous one in which attorney Victor Reeve was detained for defying the authority of a search warrant in central Alabama. Any civilian who attempted to evade a search warrant by fleeing the scene or passing off evidence to a friend would have been arrested immediately. Whatever my credentials, I will include a link to that episode in the information card above. Although the rules of this nation apply to all Americans equally, the Espanola Police Department showed Sheriff Lujan a level of forbearance that was inconsistent with the procedures often followed when dealing with regular individuals. Remember to subscribe to our channel for more coverage of cops at crime scene.
the delicate balancing act between law and ethics within the criminal justice system is starkly illustrated by this thought-provoking story. The hostage situation in Espanola, New Mexico, serves as a warning about the risks of unrestrained privilege and allegiance in some police agencies. It casts doubt on the idea that everyone should be treated equally before the law and highlights the pressing requirement for honesty and integrity among those responsible with maintaining justice. As the repercussions play out, one can't help but wonder how this case will affect how law enforcement interacts with individuals they serve in the future, highlighting the significance of keeping everyone accountable, regardless of their professional designations. Let us know in the comment section what do you think about this incident. Also, if you have any legal thoughts to share, feel free to write below. Do forget to watch the video popping on your screen as there was another corrupt cop arrested and fired by a God-fearing one. See you in there.